Myco designs, manufactures, and sells hydraulic components and systems for heavy-duty off-road vehicles and equipment. We have been providing our customers with quality hydraulic braking technology and services for over 50 years. Welcome to our series of Myco product training presentations. This presentation will look at our master cylinder and power cylinder product lines. Let's get started by taking a look at where these cylinders are used. Myco master cylinders and power cylinders are used in non-boosted brake systems where the system is manually actuated without the benefit of a power assist such as air, hydraulics, or vacuum. You can find Myco master cylinders and power cylinders on a wide variety of vehicles and equipment in the agricultural, construction, material handling, mining, and other industries. Power cylinders are commonly used in applications that need larger volume and higher pressure than provided by a conventional master cylinder. Now, before we really get into the differences between these cylinders and how they work, let's talk a little bit about the brake systems they're used in. There are three typical hydraulic braking systems in use today. They vary according to type and size of the vehicles. Knowing the type of brake system is important when determining the total volume needed to completely actuate brakes and the pressure required in a braking system. The first system is called a single system. It is one single hydraulic system braking both the front and rear brakes. There is one line running from the master cylinder and a single line leading to each wheel. The second system is called a dual system or vertical split. It is two independent braking systems, one braking the front wheels, the other braking the rear wheels. There are two lines running from the tandem master cylinder and a single line leading to each wheel. Should one system fail, the other system would continue to break the other two wheels. In some cases, a brake warning or proportioning valve is used. Other instances may have anti-lock componentry added. The final system is called a side-by-side -side system or steering assist. It is also two independent braking systems. Each system is capable of braking only one side. Both brake pedals must be actuated to apply full braking. There are two master cylinders and two brake pedals designed to operate independently with one line running from each master cylinder and one line leading to each side wheel. In some cases, it might be necessary to lock pedals together for more even braking. For this type of application, Myco offers a balancing valve to equalize pressure between systems. Myco policy requires that a brake data sheet be completed for all new applications. The data sheet for Myco Master Cylinders and Power Cylinders is form number 80-001-026. Some of the reasons for requiring brake data sheets include offering customers the safest, best, most economical, and competitive brake solutions available, collecting accurate data about the critical functionality of the brake system, preventing the improper application of Myco products, allowing MICO to better track each application, and complying with ISO requirements. Most MICO master cylinders and power cylinders are available in side and flange mounting styles. However, there are a few models available in only one. MICO has made it easy to identify its master cylinders and power cylinders. Most models include a casting number, a model number, and a serial number right on the casting to help identify the cylinder. Myco master cylinders and power cylinders can be used in drum and shoe or disc brake applications because they are available with or without a residual check valve. This device allows free flow of fluid in one direction while maintaining residual pressure from the opposite direction. Residual check valves are not needed for most disc brake applications. Disc brake systems need to be free of residual back pressure because it will hold the brake pads in contact with the disc. This results in brake drag, overheating of brake components, unnecessary wear, and premature brake replacement. Myco master cylinders are single piston straight bore type hydraulic cylinders with a reservoir and return spring typical of other master cylinders on the market. The single piston straight bore type master cylinder has been a brake system component since the early 1930s and is still in extensive use today. Advantages to this type of actuation are that master cylinders are simple, inexpensive, and available for use with brake fluid or mineral-based hydraulic oil. 
There are a number of necessary steps in determining master cylinder requirements for an application. Determine the total volume of the system fluid required. That is, calculate the cubic inch displacement of all the braking components in the system, such as wheel cylinders and caliper pistons. Calculate the total required displacement of the master cylinder by adding the brake system displacement at reserve fluid. Determine which master cylinder will develop the required volume necessary for the application. Multiplying the cubic inch area of a cylinder bore by the piston stroke can do this. Determine a pedal ratio to obtain required system pressure and acceptable pedal force. Consider application variations and options such as mounting style, porting, and need for a residual check valve. The basic components of a single master cylinder include the cylinder bore, piston, seals, fluid reservoir, and push rod. This graphic also calls out some of the other components typically found in MICO single master cylinders. Now, let us take a look at how they work. In the static position, a vehicle's brakes are completely released. The cylinder bore and reservoir are equalized at atmospheric pressure because the air vent and equalizing port are open. The residual check valve is closed and sealed against the check valve seat, causing the vehicle brake system to remain at residual back pressure, which is approximately 8 to 16 psi. Residual back pressure in the vehicle brake system is retained to help flare the lip of the cup seal in the wheel cylinder. This helps prevent leakage and or air ingestion into the brake system. As the piston is forced forward, fluid is transferred from the cylinder bore through the equalizing port and outlet port. The primary cup moves past the equalizing port and prevents any additional fluid from flowing to the reservoir. Further forward movement of the piston continues to transfer fluid from the cylinder bore past the residual check valve through the outlet port and into the brake system. A fully applied brake pedal produces pressure in the brake system equal to pedal force times pedal ratio divided by piston area. When the brake pedal is released, input force is removed from the piston. Brake system component pressure and component spring compression now cause fluid to return to the master cylinder through the outlet port. This returning fluid must overcome a resistance of 8 to 16 psi to force the residual check valve off the check valve seat. When returning fluid can no longer overcome this resistance, the residual check valve closes and the brake line pressure remains 8 to 16 psi. The residual check valve is closed and the spring continues to retract the piston. This creates a vacuum in the cylinder bore allowing fluid to pass over the piston cup, replenishing the cylinder bore. When the piston cup has returned past the equalizing port, fluid is allowed to completely fill the cylinder bore for the next brake actuation. Most of today's trucks have dual or split hydraulic brake systems. These types of systems use tandem master cylinders in which two cylinder subsystems are contained in one housing and use a common bore. The basic components of a tandem master cylinder are similar to those of the single master cylinder discussed earlier. As you can see in this graphic, however, there are a few additional components. Tandem master cylinders will include primary and secondary reservoirs, equalizing ports, pistons, and cups. They will also have two outlet ports, which are usually found on one side of the cylinder. Here is how a tandem master cylinder works. In the static position with brakes released, pressure is at zero PSI throughout the cylinder. The primary and secondary pressure cups are positioned behind the equalizing ports, allowing flow between the reservoirs and the cylinder bore. When the piston moves forward, the primary cup covers its equalizing port. At the same time, fluid trapped between the two pistons moves the secondary cup forward, covering its equalizing port. With the chambers isolated from the reservoirs, continued movement of the two pistons force brake fluid through both outlet ports and braking pressure is generated. Braking pressure will equal pedal force times pedal ratio divided by piston area. If brake system failure causes one section to become inoperative, the other section continues to function, although a longer piston stroke will be required. Myco power cylinders are also hydraulic cylinders, but incorporate the advantage of a large piston for fluid volume and a small piston for high pressure. Power cylinders, like master cylinders, are found in non-boosted brake systems where the system is manually actuated without the benefit of a power assist. Over the years, 
Larger brakes began to demand combinations of larger volumes and higher pressures than were possible from straight bore master cylinders. The power cylinder was designed to meet these demands without the use of an external power source. Power cylinders provide the advantage of higher pressure in systems without the added cost of a boosted system. They are available in brake fluid as well as hydraulic oil models. The power cylinder housing is similar to a typical master cylinder housing except for a port between the reservoir and bore where the relief valve is located. The larger low pressure piston is located in the cylinder bore within the housing. This piston displaces a large volume of fluid to the brakes at pressures below the relief valve pressure setting. The small or high pressure piston is located inside the low pressure piston. It supplies high pressure fluid to the brakes. During a brake application, the large piston overruns the small piston. The relief valve is located in the power cylinder reservoir. It is an internally metered type of valve with settings to determine how much pressure will be produced in the large bore of the power cylinder. It does not, however, control the maximum output pressure of the cylinder. Higher pressure settings displace more fluid from the large cylinder bore into the system. Consequently, required pedal effort also increases. Transfer from the low pressure piston to the high pressure piston is accomplished by means of the relief valve. Fluid displacement of these cylinders will vary depending on the relief valve setting and the overall system characteristics making it impossible to chart exact displacement. Low pressure relief valves are controlled by pressure in the low pressure bore. Pilot operated relief valves are controlled through an external tube by pressure at the fluid outlet port. Relief valves will open to relieve fluid from the large bore into the reservoir when cylinder pressure exceeds the relief valve pressure setting. If a residual check valve is used, it will be located at the cylinder outlet port. It retains 8 to 16 PSI in the brake system when the brake pedal is released. They are required on most drum shoe brake systems for flaring the lip of cup seals to prevent air from entering the brake system. Please note that residual check valves are not used with caliper disc brakes. Residual pressure will cause disc brakes to drag, resulting in heat buildup and accelerated lining wear. In brake systems with both disc and drum brakes, an inline residual check valve can be installed in the line going to the drum brakes only. Before there is pedal movement, the cylinder is in static position. That is, the vehicle brakes are completely released. The low and high pressure bores and reservoir are equalized at atmospheric pressure because the air vent and equalizing port are open. The residual check valve is closed and sealed against the check valve seat causing the vehicle brake system to remain at a residual back pressure. The relief valve is closed and the high pressure piston is not sealed against the seat. Initial movement of the brake pedal forces the low pressure piston forward. This begins to transfer fluid from the low pressure bore through the equalizing port and outlet port. The low pressure cup moves past the equalizing port preventing additional fluid from migrating into the reservoir. Continued forward pedal movement forces the high pressure piston against the seat. Pressurized fluid in the low pressure bore is forced past the high pressure cup through the outlet port and into the brake system. As the low pressure piston continues to move forward, it causes the brake system to reach the relief valve pressure setting. The relief valve opens and fluid in the low pressure bore flows into the reservoir past the metering pin and the relief valve piston. Fluid pressure in the low pressure bore will remain at the relief valve setting. Continued forward movement of the low pressure piston causes fluid in the high pressure bore to flare the high pressure cup. This will close off fluid flow into the high pressure bore from the low pressure bore and will allow fluid in the high pressure bore to be forced through the outlet port and into the brake system. System components under pressure and component springs under compression now cause the fluid to return to the power cylinder through the outlet port. This returning fluid must overcome a resistance of 8 to 16 PSI to force the check valve off the seat. When returning fluid can no longer overcome this resistance, the residual check valve closes and brake line pressure remains at 8 to 16 PSI. The low pressure piston returns to the point where the fluid was displaced into the reservoir through the relief valve during the forward stroke. The residual check valve is now closed 
and springs continue to retract the low pressure and high pressure pistons. This creates a vacuum in the low and high pressure bores. The air vent allows atmospheric pressure in the reservoir, forcing fluid to flow through the reservoir ports, opening the disc check valve and into the low and high pressure bores until the piston is returned to a static condition. The equalizing port allows fluid to completely fill the low pressure bore for the next brake actuation. Vehicle brakes are completely released, which means the cylinder is in the static position. The low and high pressure bores and reservoir are equalized at atmospheric pressure because the air vent and equalizing port are open. The residual check valve is closed and sealed against the check valve seat, causing the vehicle brake system to remain at a residual back pressure of approximately 8 to 16 psi. Residual back pressure in the vehicle brake system is retained to flare the lip of the cup seal in the wheel cylinder so as to prevent leakage and or air ingestion into the brake system. The relief valve is now closed and the high pressure piston is not sealed against the seat. The low pressure piston is forced forward. Forward movement of the low pressure piston begins to transfer fluid from the low pressure bore through the equalizing port and outlet port. The low pressure cup moves past the equalizing port, preventing any additional fluid from flowing into the reservoir. Continued forward pedal movement forces the high pressure piston against the seat. Pressurized fluid in the low pressure bore is forced past the high pressure cup through the outlet port into the brake system. At this point of actuation, pressure in the brake system equals pedal force times pedal ratio divided by the low pressure piston area. Forward movement of the low pressure piston causes the brake system to reach the relief valve pressure setting. Pressure in the pilot line and inside the low pressure bore cause the relief valve to open and fluid in the low pressure bore flows into the reservoir past the metering pin and the relief valve piston. Fluid in the low pressure bore is metered to near atmospheric pressure. The velocity of discharge fluid through the relief valve is controlled by the size of the metering pin. Fluid in the high pressure bore flares the high pressure cup, closing off fluid flow into the high pressure bore from the low pressure bore. Continued forward movement of the low pressure piston forces the fluid in the high pressure bore through the outlet port. Pressure in the brake system at fully applied pedal equals pedal force times pedal ratio divided by the high pressure piston area. System components under pressure and component springs under compression now cause fluid to return to the power cylinder through the outlet port. This returning fluid must overcome a resistance of 8 to 16 psi to force the check valve off the seat. When returning fluid can no longer overcome this resistance, the residual check valve closes. The brake line pressure remains at 8 to 16 psi. The low pressure piston returns to the point where fluid was displaced into the reservoir through the relief valve during the forward stroke. The residual check valve is closed and the spring continues to retract the low and high pressure pistons. This creates a vacuum in the low and high pressure bores. The air vent allows atmospheric pressure in the reservoir, forcing fluid to flow through the reservoir ports, opening the disc check valve and into the low and high pressure bores until the piston is returned to the static condition. The equalizing port allows fluid to completely fill the low pressure bore for the next brake actuation. Meeting the needs of our customers is the number one goal at MICO. If you need additional information, please contact us by internet, fax or phone. MICO is ready to serve you.